In implementation of the royal directives of organizing a national campaign to provide relief aid to the Palestinians who have been affected by the ongoing war and the dire humanitarian conditions in the Gaza Strip, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed to form a national committee comprising of government entities and charity and professional associations. His Highness said that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has always been supportive of countries undergoing various circumstances. He extended his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for his stances and the support received by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation from the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness said that the National Committee for the Support of the Palestinians in Gaza will unify efforts to provide humanitarian aid urgently after assessing the requirements. His Highness the Secretary General of RHF Dr. Mustafa Sayyid as the Chief Executive of this committee Dr. Sayyid said that the committee is preparing to hold a meeting and will launch initiatives and efforts to support the people of Gaza in reflection of the firm stances of the Kingdom of Bahrain towards the Palestinian cause. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation is organizing a campaign to aid the Palestinians affected by the war in the Gaza Strip under the slogan Help Gaza. This uh, national campaign aims to unify humanitarian efforts in the Kingdom of Bahrain to provide the necessary support to the Palestinians. The concerned ministries, the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry and charity organizations in addition to all sects of the Bahraini society will contribute to this national campaign which affects or which reflects the Bahraini's love to charitable and humanitarian work as well as keenness to extend a helping hand to the needy and stand with brothers under various circumstances. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh presided over the Council's weekly session. The Council approved the formation of a committee to prepare a draft response to the Royal Speech according to the proposal submitted by the Council. The Council also approved the formation of a permanent qualitative committees. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa visited the National Center for Mary Culture in Ras Hayyan to open the Gulf Fish Aquarium in the presence of the Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture Wa'al Al Mbarak, the Minister of Works Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, the Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, and a number of officials and businessmen. The company is the first of its kind in Bahrain for shrimp farming, which is one of the successful initiatives of the partnership between the Minister Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and the private sector. Jihad bin Abdullah affirmed the importance of encouraging national caterers to continue investment in food industries, especially in marine farming, to increase food security, which is an implementation of the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the directives of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the government continues to increase its projects that support food security by offering a package of investment vouchers in plant agriculture, livestock, and fish farming. The Deputy Premier hailed the partnership's encouragement for Bahraini investors to establish similar future projects that will contribute to boosting the national economy and producing safe, high-quality local food that meet high standards. He directed the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture to continue creating opportunities for investors to cultivate varieties that meet the needs of consumers to achieve the environmental sustainability of natural resources. He commended the project's organizers and wished them success in the operati operational processes. He also commended uh, the continuous efforts of the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Ministry employees in follow-up on the implementation of national plans aimed at increasing the production capacity of fish in the kingdom. For his part, Al Mbarak affirmed that the ministry continues to encourage the private sector to invest in fish farming, including preparing the necessary infrastructure for this important economic activity to keep pace with the goals of the comprehensive development process. He noted that the next stage will witness the operation of more investment pro projects in the field of fish farming. 
In line with the royal directives of His Majesty the King to enhance food security in the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Gulf Aquaculture Company project, which specializes in shrimp farming, came to create a unique Bahraini imprint that affirms the serious pursuit of achieving food security and providing consumable quantities needed by the Bahraini market. Modern technologies and advanced work mechanisms applied by the company with professionalism won the approval and admiration of all those who attended the opening, including the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, due to the company's ambition to provide a large, high-quality production and embodiment of the effective partnership with the private sector. This distinguished project is a stimulating and encouraging impetus for more strategic investment in national projects, aspiring to strengthen the national economy and produce local, safe, high-quality food, which will achieve the Kingdom of Bahrain's national goals of achieving food security and effective partnership with the private sector. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the plenary session of the World Bank Group WBG and International Monetary Fund IMF Boards of Governors, currently held in Marrakech, Morocco, to discuss economic issues and challenges facing the global economy. Held as part of the 2023 WBG IMF annual meetings, the plenary session discussed global economic issues in addition to ways to accelerate the pace of achieving sustainable development goals. The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Sheikh Dr. Rana bin Isa bin Dej Al Khalifa, participated as a main speaker in the opening session of the 11th Gulf Human Rights Summit held in Abu Dhabi. Sheikh Dr. Rana affirmed that investing in international cadres is a main pillar of the Comprehensive Development March whose foundations were laid by His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She said that continuous learning to keep in line with the rapid changes in the technological development field is a main requirement for the development of cadres, noting that institutional outcomes and goals will not be achieved without strengthening the culture of working as one team. She added that a leader must invest in the work team and uh, to ensure the continuation of growth and development. On the 15th of October of each year, the Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates Bahraini Engineers Day. More in this report. Bahraini people proved their worth in the process of construction and development. The 15th of October of every year celebrates them in appreciation for their great role that they play in various specializations. Bahrain has made numerous achievements in developing its industrial, development, urban and cultural horizons and making achievements in various engineering specializations locally and globally. Throughout its long history, the engineering sector in the country has been able to develop various sectors in the kingdom, support the economic development movement and create the appropriate infrastructure for an advanced and sustainable industrial and technological future. By implementing several important projects and providing various construction, technical and artistic services within the highest international standards, Bahrain has achieved its strategic objectives of the development process. The Kingdom of Bahrain has a long history of producing engineers who have enriched the development scene, in addition to embracing and supporting the projects of Bahraini engineers and encouraging their contribution in various sectors out of its belief in the importance of investing in the human element. Bahrain was, and still, is proud of the efforts and achievements of its engineers, who learned and succeeded in shaping the features of the kingdom. As part of the Nasr bin Hamad marine heritage season, the fishing competition kicked off amidst wide participation. The competition witnessed the participation of 600 people on board of 150 boats. The competition is part of the sixth edition of the Nasr bin Hamad marine heritage season organized by Bahrain Heritage Sports Committee. After announcing the winners, the organizing committee expressed appreciation to all participants, which affirms their pride in the heritage sports and professions. Sebastian Loeb took Bahrain raid extreme into the heat of the battle in the Rally du Maroc. As Qatar's Nasser al atiyah moved closer to retaining his driver's title in the World Rally Raid Championship, Loeb driving his BRX Pro Drive Hunter recorded a third place finish on the rally's 311 kilometer opening stage between Ghadir and Sagora, which was won by Al Atiya. Nine-time World Rally Champion Loeb and Fabian Lorquin are back together again after the Belgian co-driver broke his shoulder in April's so Sonora Rally in Mexico. Orly Ternova was sixth quickest in his BRX a Pro Drive Hunter alongside new Argentinian co-driver Bernardo Grau.
Yeah, it was okay. Uh, we had a, a clean stage, uh, no no mistake, no punctures. Uh, it was not an easy, an easy one to start. Um, also, like we started 12, we we were a lot in the dust. Uh, I catch Terranova quite early, but he had a puncture, so finally I didn't lose too much time with that. And then I catch Peter Ansel, and he was driving quite quick. And in Morocco, you have a lot of dust, so I did. Uh, I think 150 kilometers behind him, trying to catch, but not able to come close enough. Uh, in the slow zone, I had him just in front, but not enough to get the Sentinel. So it was missing a little bit. So then uh, finally I passed him and he catched me back in the dunes. It was a tricky place in the dunes where it was two lines between motorbikes and cars. The cars follow the motorbikes track. So at, the, at one point we had to decide to go for a to look for our point. We did it well, but on a fresh dune, so with not high speed, and Peter Ansel was close behind. He passed again in front, and but okay. Um, it was not an easy one. Uh, a bit of everything, a bit of sand, a lot of tracks, stones, no punctures, uh, good stage. His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud met with the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken where they discussed the current military escalation in Gaza and its environs. The Saudi Crown Prince stressed the need to work to discuss ways to stop the military operations that claim the lives of innocent people, emphasizing the kingdom's endeavors to increase communication, work to calm the situation, stop the current escalation and respect international humanitarian law, including lifting the siege on Gaza and working to create conditions for the return of stability and the restoration of the path of peace to ensure that the Palestinian people obtain their legitimate rights and achieve just and lasting peace. The Saudi Crown Prince stressed his country's refusal of targeting civilians or disrupting infrastructure and vital interests that affect their daily lives. The Saudi Foreign Minister, His Highness uh, Prince Faisal bin Farhan, stressed the need for the UN Security Council to fulfill its responsibility to maintain international peace and security by pushing for an immediate secession of military operations and lifting the siege on Gaza. During a telephone call with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi, the Saudi Foreign Minister stressed the need to urge Beijing, based on its role as a permanent member of the Security Council, to work to ensure that the Council carries out its responsibility. He stressed the importance of the Council's work to implement its decisions regarding the Palestinian cause in a way that establishes a just, comprehensive and sustainable solution to the Palestinian people. They discussed the latest developments in the situation in Gaza and its surroundings and the international efforts made in this regard. The GCC Secretary General Jassim al Bdewi participated in the meeting held between ministers and governors of the Middle East and North Africa and the Director General of the International Monetary Fund. He announced that the GCC countries recorded a remarkable growth in the GDP by 7.3% in 2022, emphasizing that economic challenges pose a threat to the goal of a world free of poverty characterized by sustainable development and shared prosperity. He stressed that global economic challenges require finding sustainable solutions through cooperation with global financial institutions as well as bilateral and multilateral agreements between countries and institutions. Rabdewi praised the progress made in the structural reform undertaken by the GCC countries in the face of economic challenges, the results of which have brought positive results to the economy and improved the business climate and competitiveness. The UAE sent two aid planes with a capacity of 53 tons to those affected by the earthquake that struck the western region of Afghanistan recently. This is part of the humanitarian air bridge directed by the president of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The aid included food and basic commodities as well as 500 tents for urgent shelter as part of diversifying the UAE's relief efforts to provide the basic needs to the afflicted, especially for children, women and the elderly. 
A report by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations affirmed that the increasing intensity and frequency of disasters is causing more losses in agricultural crops and livestock worldwide. Losses exceeded $200 billion last year, and the organization stated that the number of floods, droughts, insect infestations, and wars has quadrupled to about 400 problems annually compared to the 1970s. The organization explained that annual economic losses amounted to an average of $123 billion over the past three decades, with a total loss estimated at $3.8 trillion.